coming right there. Los manos, pendecos! All right, tactical rifleman guys. Good to see you. I'm Sue LaRue. This week we're going to talk about the history of pistols. But first, our word from our sponsors. This week's video is brought to you by JX Tactical. All their holsters are proudly made in the USA. They've got them for all different body shapes and sizes, inside the waistband, outside the waistband. My two favorites are their low rider holster and their fat guy holster. So if, uh, let's say you're carrying a little extra tactical fluff, a little extra gristle, doesn't matter. This is, a, this is the most comfortable appendix carry holster I've found so far it's available with the soft loops you can get a uh, regular standard clip for it and they also ult, uh, offer the ulti clip for it which is badass it clamps down tight it's not going to move it's great stuff all the holsters are cut uh, from the start for optics so whether you're running an optic or not these right here are great holsters special thanks again to jx tactical welcome back guys as you guys know that i'm uh considered the old school guy so with my buddy Emery here, we're gonna talk about the development of ammunition and pistols uh, clear back in the last century and where we got at and how we got to where we're at today with uh, all of our pistols in our modern day, in our modern day uh, arsenal. The pistol actually started uh, back during the uh, March 6, 1836. What day was that, Emery? Mark? Six? March 6th, 1836. Tuesday. If you don't know that, you can't move to Texas. That was the day of the Alamo, all right? We had the 3,000 Mexican army uh, led by Santa Ana go against 180 guys at the Alamo, and that was all done with muzzle loaders, and your pistols were also muzzle loaders, all right? Soon after that, during this whole war in Texas, a man named Samuel Colt went down there, and he came up with an idea of a revolving cylinder right a revolving cylinder that didn't have a pistol guard in it it was done in the 36 caliber right soon after that well not soon after that it took another decade almost but uh, he worked with a guy who was fought also fought there with sam houston against the santa Ana army and was a texas ranger he later became an officer named samuel walker samuel walker and samuel colt both sams developed what there's a lot of you guys have seen on the iconic movies and things like what, the Colt Walker, right? Feel that, Emery. What do you think of that? Holy cow, that's like, uh, that's like my Desert Eagle. Yep, that's four and a half that? pounds, four and a half pounds, 15 and a half inches long, right? This thing <laughs> had a long cal, or this, they changed the calibers. Samuel Colt, or Samuel Walker, I'm sorry, wanted Colt to upgrade from a 36 to a 44 caliber, right? He wanted more stopping power against the Comanches, who was one of the greatest tribes out there in Texas at the time because they had the, the horses the longest. So your Comanches and Kiowas were really giving those Texans a hard time. So what they would do was they would load up uh, six of these shots in these, in these Walker, or a lot of times people refer to these as the Dragoon pistol. And the army actually adapted this in 1847, shortly after the Mexican-American War. So yeah, so what we're looking at here is you have a muzzle loading cylinder and I see a spot here for a percussion cap. Right. And this was this was where it started. Yep. Basically, basically your your muzzle loader, as everybody most of you know out there already know, muzzle loader goes in through the muzzle. You put your your patch and your ball through the muzzle, you use a ramrod and break it down. What Samuel Colt does was he developed basically a loading system, right? Put it half cock, and you can move the cylinder around like that. And you can use your loading lever. What you do is you put your powder in here, a ball, and we'll demonstrate this real quick. 
and you can basically put your powder and ball in there pretty tight and then later use a priming cap uh, the number number uh, the number 10 priming cap put it on the 11 number so 11 super, nipple powder goes in Powder ball goes in right now the ball from what you were showing me I'm a complete virgin to all of these single actions right I'm, uh, this is not my wheelhouse which is why we're having so much fun because you you're, you're teaching me all this stuff and it's awesome okay. so because I'm such a virgin let me explain this to you in virgin terms right so essentially let me grab a bigger one so we can show it does this work the same way ish um, so powder goes directly into the cylinder Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's have you do it hands on. All okay. right. For the walkers, the powder measure, uh, powder is measured in grains of powder. Black powder, modern smokeless powder is measured in grains of powder. A grain is one seven thousandths of a pound. Okay. The way they did it back then, uh, back in the old days, instead of using a measurer that would measure, measure things out, right, they made the cylinder the basic charge weight. For the walker, we use 60 grains of powder, and you just hold this little lever open, give it a couple of shakes, and you have 60 grains of powder. Okay. For the one you had, let's, uh, yeah, go with your old army. This is the old army. Okay. Okay. For, put it in half cock, mm -hmm. like this, so you can move the cylinder. Basically yep. half cock, so you can move the cylinder like that. Okay. Okay. Now, so put it in half cock. First click, half cock. All right, now move your cylinder, make sure. Rotating All right, now freely. turn the pistol up. Vertical. Okay, what you're gonna do is work from this side, so leave that to the camera from so the guys side. can see, yep. all right? What you're gonna do is take this, and we're using Pyrodex instead of black powder today. You're gonna hold your finger over this, you're yep. gonna hold it, and you're gonna open the lever, and you're gonna give it a couple shakes down like this until you got the So full. that's essentially the black ring around here is an old school spring. It's a spring. So that's keeping our, our trap door closed. Yep. All right, so I'm going to open that, cover the top with a thumb, give it a couple of that's shakes. A, that's a finger. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> that is a finger, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I get my words confused. All right. <clears throat> now, does it make a difference which which? What you want to do is right before, with... it, and the what I do is I actually take this lever and ram, and I put it into one of the cylinders. So to mark where I'm at, on you. right? So now I want to put that powder right there the so I don't one. get lost where I'm at, okay? Okay. Now, All right, so that's in there. One of the more modern inventions now is we want to put what's called a wad. These are a cotton wad, basically made of the same size. Put that over there so we don't get what's called a crossfire, All right? Back in the day, these revolvers had a lot of crossfires, especially when people first started to learn how to use them. The powder would come out, the powder would come through here, the burning powder would jump into another cylinder and you'd get a crossfire so setting all of them off. Just like any modern gun, your muzzle flash is right, the, the fireball that comes out of the front of the gun, it's it's powder that hasn't burned yet inside burning. a barrel, right? And so most guns have that. And what you're saying is a spark or two might go and ignite uh, gunpowder or black powder in an adjacent cylinder. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Happened, happened many times in the past, all right? This ball is basically just a, le le a regular lead core ball the size of a 40, 4, 0.454 inches, all right? 454. Now, 454, so it's right? it's bigger now, than the actual. Now you take this and you put it over. Underneath it, okay. Over your ram. Now it takes a little bit of guff. You're gonna have to put it in there pretty hard. Let me line hard. it up. Okay, she's lined up. Oh yeah, it does. It does, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, you give me some of that action, girly. Ooh. It'll go. Is It'll there go. a... <laughs> I see I like it peeling. Do, what I like to do is put it on the table. Okay, put it not on the my table. soft gut. And once it goes like that, Feel how hard it sets. Once it comes, lift that back up slowly. And I see You'll that little ring. You'll notice a ring, a ring of lead comes off of there. Most of you know I'm working on, I'm working as an uh, ammo developer on frangible ammunition. I'd like to do a lot of stuff with frangible. I have not yet developed a ball that will, a frangible ball that will survive that red ring coming off of there. Okay, so let me load the next cylinder here. I'll put a wad Keep in. Keep your ram it. down so you don't get lost. Okay. I'll put a wad in there, or these wads. I'll get it to you. 
We're yeah. almost out of wads. Yeah, you play with my balls there. May I? May I please? <laughs> Another one. All right, this comes up. We're gonna line up the next ball underneath the ram, put this on the table, and definitely put my face right over the muzzle. Later that same evening. That's how you load the revolver, all right? The black powder revolver. Let me go back to the history of this. This is called the Navy model. Notice it's still a half frame, okay? And you got H your cylinder. Half frame meaning there's no, there's no piece of the frame going over top of the going cylinder. Over, right, so going over it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't have anything there. There's a, over a quarter million of these were made for the Civil War. It wasn't made for the Navy. They just called it the Navy, the Navy revolver, right? In 1872, the Army adopted this. It has the full frame. This is called the Old Army. The frame actually goes over it, and you can actually switch these cylinders out real quick. They stop carrying multiple pistols, <coughs> and you could actually pull the lever out. You can put it in, grab another one, ah. and you can load pretty dang quick. So you're saying the original speed load. That was your original speed load, ready to go with your next six shots, okay? Now, when they carried the spare cylinders on their belt or whatever, did they already have the percussion caps already on? Already had them percussioned up. Right? Okay, so, so you if fall you off your horse, you your pistol toast. belt, yeah, or if you got hit, you got hit in the side, it would go off, yep. right? Yep, that's great. Right, because that, 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 that primer would primer would act on it. Here's what eventually led into this, when all the guys out west, out west were using these, buying them from the army or buying them from Colt, right? You could actually get a, <clears throat> a cylinder that actually opened up in the back like this, okay? And once they developed a brass case, the brass case would actually go Sound. into the cylinder and you could use them in your old black powder revolvers. So these are the 45 long Colt, more modern day 45 Colt. Right? So now this cylinder cap, it looks like, it almost looks like each, got, each space has its own firing pin. Has its own firing pin, that's wow. exactly correct. So if you look at that, I don't know if you guys can see that really well. It has little small firing pins on each one of those cylinders, okay? And then, of course, we have the development of the actual single the action. Arm. This is this is a single action Colt Old Army, right? Made, made by, by Ruger. Made by Ruger, <laughs> right? And instead of having your arming lever or your loading lever, now since you're using the case, right? Your case has to come out. Mm -hmm. Now you have you can door. move the cylinder. Now you can eject the cases as you go. The 45 Long Colt was developed using the brass case. We'll get into that and why they chose brass later. But basically, the brass case became the cylinder of what we use in the old cap and ball revolver. There's your cap, there's your, there's your powder, there's your ball inside of the cylinder. Now you could take the whole case and stick it inside of the cylinder of the old army 1874 Colt revolver. So that means a couple of things, Sue, right? A, <coughs> you have a faster, essentially, loading process or reloading process. B, because the cylinder is no longer the actual brass case, you can have a, you can have less metal in the cylinder making the gun lighter, is that correct? Uh, uh, that, Maybe. This is, this is basically what became rifle calibers later. Yep. Okay, this is a straight wall case. Then we get into rifle cap. There's actually rifles that are 45 long Colt or the old cowboys would carry 44, 40 pistol, pistol rounds, and they would have a lever action done by John Moses Browning, who actually was an engineer for Winchester doing the drawings. I didn't know that until recently. And then Browning, of course, developed the gas, the gas systems that are used, still to use today on the modern batter food. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, some disadvantages of this, and you'll see it when we go shoot, all right? The, you notice I have a piece of leather over here, right? The disadvantages of using these black powder revolvers is during the firing process, this has 60 grains of powder in it. The actual 
arming lever will come down during your firing and it'll actually stop the cylinder. So the old cowboys would just put a piece of leather over that to mitigate that. And then the caps themselves, they bust open. They become real small and everything like that, causing a lot of this, this, this stuff to get tied into the actual gears and stuff back here, turning the, turning the cylinder. Yeah, and we actually got some of that today, right? The percussion cap kind of splits open and it jams up the cylinder and then you got to mess with it, take out your folding knife that they didn't have back then and pry that shit out of there. And you would have a lot of, uh, you, like I said, we didn't have the paper wads back, they didn't have the paper wads back then. They, they, they did use paper, but if they didn't have the wadding out there, they just go ahead and load it. You have some, uh, some moisture get into your powders, misfires or uh, failure, failure to feed was, or failure to get to the next chamber was pretty common back in those days. Now, having said that, the other day when you, <laughs> you pulled in here and you pulled out these guns just for us to play around with, and you went, oh shit, this one's still loaded, and the one that was kind of rusted. Yes. <laughs> and it was sitting there, and you were saying it must have been loaded for a couple of years, and there was surface rust all over the gun. We pulled it out, and all six cylinders fired. That's, that's a good point. What I did do before I did that was on these, on these nipples, right? Again, do not dry fire, do not dry fire these weapons because the hammer actually hits the nipple, right? And if the nipple gets worn down, you'll get a, you got to get your replacement nipples, number 11 replacement nipples, and using the nipple wrench. Don't wear down the nipples. Right? Because only, only thing that should have nipples is pistols and women, right? But this nipple wrench takes off the nipple, you have to replace the nipple. But like he said, there was, there was a, uh, one, of the, one of the chambers was loaded with powder and ball. And I took a paper clip, just a simple paper clip, made it made a 90 degree bend in it. So put, you're cleaning out the flash clip, hole. And I made sure my flash hole was open before I fired it. Now, if you notice there, that nipple's a little bit loose That's right there. Loose. You gotta get the wrench on that and turn that nipple and tighten it up. Okay. 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 A lot of maintenance, <coughs> high maintenance, but they are a lot of fun. Being black powder, there's no tax stamp. And because they're pre-1897, there's, there's actually very little regulation. You can actually get these in the mail if you wanted to get them in the mail. All right? Very cool. So let's go very shoot cool. some of them and have some yeah, fun. Yeah, let's go right. shoot them. Sue, that was a ball. That was a ball. What I can't believe is that these things, these things are surprisingly accurate. They are. I was like, holy shit, you can actually hit something. I hit a hundred meter shot with a with a black rifle, a black powder. You pistol. hit a hundred meter shot with a thirty with thirty grains of black powder. The sixty grains is pretty pretty common for a guy to hit up to on an E type silhouette. You can hit up to about two hundred yards. Crazy, right? Two hundred yards. I can't even do that with a Glock. The little pistol model. The, or I'm sorry, the little uh, police, police pistol. This is the police model, right? These things are actually very, very well made. Even though it's a half frame and everything like that, uh, they, they. I still put 30 grains of powder in them, and uh, they're pretty accurate, uh, out to about 50 yards. You know what my favorite thing about this whole kit and caboodle is, Sue? When I look at one of these, only one word comes to mind: America. America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh so, yeah, this is all this is all developed pretty much on the American frontier and during the uh, the Civil War. So the Texas to the Civil War, we got 40, 50 years there of pistol development there. If you guys got any questions, be sure and let us know. Be sure to subscribe to Tactical Rifleman. Let us know if you want to do some more of the histi uh, the, the history of firearms, real quick, down and dirty, and kind of lead you into the development of not only weapon systems, but the development of ammunition. Uh, something that I'm near and dear to my heart. Thanks, brother, I appreciate you. Thank you, all right. Guys, check us out next week. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.
Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.